Welcome everyone to you know what lesson 10 we have done it we have reached we have reached double digits This is actually lesson 10 um, And we're gonna talk about linking adjectives. We're going back to do more adjectives stuff um, but Worry not because this isn't all that different from what we've actually discussed in the past most of all about the te form uh, because today we will learn um, about te form of e adjectives and how to link both e and na adjectives together. So linking adjectives, what do we mean when we say linking adjectives? Basically, if you want to say something is big, you just say it's big, right? And if you want to say something is is like green, you just say it's green. But how do you say that it's two things, right? If you have adjective one, <laughs> I did my I did my DG letter again. No adjectives. We don't talk about those. No, they're just ver they're just nouns. <laughs> if you have two adjectives and you want to like combine them together, well, how do you do that? And then you have both of these go to a noun, right? So how how do we deal with that? Internet tank, thank you for the follow. Hello, arigatou gozaimasu. Mm. Ah, ah, yes, coffee. The juice of life. So how do we do this? Well, at to. No. <laughs> Good thing that we're going to discuss it today. So um, that's um, like the first impulse of someone might be, oh, you do something like to. Because to, a lot of people are taught like, oh, yeah, to is and. But it's sadly not as easy as that. Um, because this is maybe true, but it's only kind of true because to is only and when it's between nouns, right? Noun, to, noun. That works. Adjective doesn't work, okay? Adjective, to, adjective. That's wrong. You can't do that. Um, this is bad. This is good. So that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And for that, we need to, as always, talk about the two main groups. To omoimasu. Yeah, the quotation marker is a little bit different. <laughs> so, first we need to talk about, obviously, the two groups of adjectives. Someone, tell me, what are the two main groups of adjectives? Quick, you can do it, I believe in you. Someone tell it to me. Give it to me straight. <sighs> Ina, there you go. E and na adjectives. That's exactly right. Um, I'm hoping that all of you know this. For those of you that don't know this, don't worry, I have made a lesson about it. So if you want to check it out, it is here. Um, it's in this playlist. Lesson something. Uh, two, I think. Two or three. Doesn't matter. So, omoimasu. Sono o omoimasu. That's a bit... There, there's something's wrong there, but yeah. We can talk about that sentence maybe later. Keiyoshi and Keiyodoshi. Yeah, those are the Japanese names for them. Which I also do discuss in the video. But... Um, I feel like in this case, there's no need to use the Japanese name as the English name E adjective. E adjective and Na adjective are actually quite nice. They describe it fairly nicely. Um, I'm not going to go too deep about this because, again, I have made a whole one hour lesson about it. But E adjectives always end in E. End in E. And Na adjectives. So maybe let's divide this Na adjectives. Um, they require require na in front of nouns. In front of nouns, okay? That's basically the, the main difference. They're both adjectives. They're both words that describe... Um, they're both words that describe... Ver um, sorry, nouns. Yeah, so keiodoshi does mean like describing verb, but the reason why... Um, as it was explained to me at some point, the reason why na adjectives are called keiodoshi is actually because they were they rely on the um, on the verb or the pseudo verb uh, da to actually be used with nouns. So um, you rely on the copula da and na um, to actually use keiodoshi as describing words. Like without without them. Um, you can't use it the same way, right? Whereas e adjectives actually have the predicate sort of baked into them. Don't forget about taru adjectives. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, well, taru and no adjectives and whatever. It's it's more complicated as always. But I feel like 
the good thing about E and Na adjectives is that it does cover quite um, a decent chunk. It covers most of it. Uh, surprised I can understand your words. I keep following up. Nice. Well, I'm glad you can follow me then. Somewhere from China. Interesting. Good stuff. So, let's get started. We're gonna learn how to link adjectives. So we're gonna learn how to say that someone, someone or something isn't only one thing, but there may be multiple things. And how do we do this? Well, let's start with E adjectives, since that's usually the starting point. E adjectives. So, E adjectives, turns out, have a te form. And if you have watched episode, I think if you have watched ep lesson um, seven, then you know te form is a conjunctive form that verbs have, or that you can you can conjugate verbs into this so-called te form, and it's a conjunctive, so it, it's like it can be used like to link things together, right? So good for us. E adjectives have also a so-called te form. And it works the very same way. It has it's some sort of conjugation of that adjective that uses te, and then afterwards it becomes like a conjunctive, and we can link another adjective afterwards. Not a verb. If we wanted a verb afterwards, we would have to look into adverbs. But that's for another lesson. For now, if we use this te form of adjectives, we can link up another adjective. And this is really useful, obviously, because sometimes we don't just want to use one adjective. We want to say something is green and round and large and friendly or something. So sometimes we want to have a noun that has multiple properties, not just one. And we don't always have to like start a new sentence over it, right? Because that's a pain in the butt. So no one wants to do that. So how do we do this? Well, we need to learn to form of e adjectives. A big friendly giant. Yes, exactly, the big friendly giant. And you'd be pleased to also know that, not unlike English, where there is actually a grammatical ordering of adjectives, there is no such order that I'm aware of in Japanese. <laughs> Japanaholic Taylor. Hey, Taylor, thank you for the follow. Follow, arigatou gozaimasu. There is actually no set order for um, adjectives in Japanese. I've never been able to find anything that would suggest that there is. Even for mixing na adjectives and e adjectives, there doesn't seem to be any set order. You can say say it in, in any order you you desire. And QT the fox, thank you. Arigato. So how does this te form look like? Well, you know that the general form, okay, the general form of any e adjective. Jesus, stop. The hell's angels are outside. The general form of any E adjective is something like this, right? You have an adjective stem and it ends in E, right? E. This is the, like, the canonical form of any E adjective. It is defined by ending in E, literally, right? Um, and Chaldea, thank you. Chaldea JP, follow, arigatou gozaimasu. Yuki Dano-san, konnichiwa. Chiri. <laughs> Could actually be placed in a post position. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Does it make sense? Uh, if I add nothing but just a comma, does it make sense? Well, it could be understood. It's probably not very grammatical. So, you know, the canonical form of any E adjective is generally just this. You have an adjective and it ends in E. Let's look at some examples, right? For example, um, oishii, which means delicious. Oi. Si. Well, it does end in E, so that's good. And another, there's so many followers today. Gank, 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 thank you. Follow, arigatou gozaimasu. What happened? So many, <laughs> so many people are following. Um, oishi, or what's another one? Well, for example, um, I guess we could go with oki, right? Oki. Oki. Uh, I kind of messed up. It would be like oki, right? It has two o's. Oki. Also ends in an e. Roki-san, konnichiwa. Tanoshi. Yeah, tanoshi counts as well. So tanoshi. I'm writing these all in kana first because I don't remember all the kanji properly um, <laughs> for like writing them. And second, because it doesn't really matter here. We're talking more about the last e and how we change, how we conjugate in general, right? But yeah, so... 楽しい. 
tanoshi also this last e so you can see all of these are e adjectives and if ever you don't know if an adjective is an e adjective or not you can use any standard dictionary so it should tell you right if we put in here tanoshi tanoshi uh, tanoshi right it tells you e adjective you don't even have to think about it you can just look it up as very convenient isn't it e and yoi are also e adjectives yeah now um, e adjectives of course all end in e maybe the one thing that i need to point out is that there are some no adjectives that end in e and are still no adjectives um mainly most famously it will probably be kirai right kirai kirai or um mitai so um kirai well rashi is actually interesting because it behaves just like an e adjective and you can conjugate it just like an e adjective um Kirei and kirai are the two main non-adjectives, and you can't think of any others. Yeah, mitai as a suffix, sure, yeah. And also, I wouldn't even count kirei, to be honest, because an e adjective must have the e as part of okurigana. If it is not part of okurigana, it is. it cannot be an e adjective, because if it wasn't okurigana... Well, if it's not okurigana, we can't conjugate it, so... Um, I'm so sorry for all the noise. <laughs> so because if it wasn't uh, part of okurigana, we, would we wouldn't be able to actually properly conjugate it and it would couldn't follow the rules of e-adjectives. So that's why kire I would count as not even an exception in that regard. But sure, right? Like kire. Um, Alright, so those are all e-adjectives. Now, why we're actually here is... Hello! Nani kore? Ah, ninja-san? Hello. There's like ototsu and dekoboko, but I keep forgetting which one is which. So let's actually look at how to how we make this te form, okay? And lucky for us, it's very, very simple. We take e and we replace it with kute, okay? So you get adjective stem. And instead of e, you just get kute. Okay, that's that's all. Like <laughs> this is it. You're you're done. Okay, easy, easy business. Um, let's make some examples. So we had uh, tanoshi, right? So what does tanoshi become? So we have tanoshi. Well, simple. This stays the same. Tano. Okay, I have to actually finish the ta. Um, tano shi stays the same, and then instead of the e. Instead of this e here, we just write kute, kute. That's it. Tanoshikute. And this is now the te form, you know, right here. This is now the te form of an e adjective. And you just do this. Tashikani awarete mireba. So ne, kantan desu ne. Easier than I thought. Yes. So you'll see that, um, yeah, minus the e. So basically, um, e turns into kute. That's basically it, right? You take away the e, the e goes away, and this goes away, and it becomes kute. And that's kind of it. Um, actually, most of Japanese conjugation is surprisingly simple if you think about it. For those of you that have watched my episode about verbs, they will know that all the stem forms and stuff like that is usually either it's a matter of replacing one kana, or it's a matter of adding kana or changing a vowel. It's generally just that. Um, will we go into X she adjectives? Uh, can you explain a little bit more? Uh, like tanoshi? What? They're not really special. They're just e adjectives. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that's literally it. Make me let me make some space and then we can make some examples. So now with this, we can link up e adjectives. So keep that in mind, okay? E becomes kute, that's it. Atsukute samui. Yeah, so Atha has already made a pretty good example, right? If we wanted to say hot and cold, that's exactly what we do. We take the te form and we just add the other e adjective. Now, whether or not atsukute samui makes sense in the real world, that doesn't really matter. It's grammatically correct, though. So um, if we take atsui, how do we, you know, how do we conjugate? Wait. How do we conjugate atsui? Atsui is an e adjective. Kuromo, follow, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you for following. Atsui is an e adjective. Um, first of all, because I'm telling you it is. And second, because it also does end in e. Um, and we could look it up and it would say that it's an e adjective. 
So we have this E here. Well, what do we do? We just get rid of it and we add K T instead. Now what do we have? We have the T form of Atsui, Atsukute. So what, what, what is that? Like, what does that do? Well, it doesn't really do anything. Um, remember, when we talked about the te form for verbs, I told you that the te form of a verb doesn't really change the meaning of the verb at all, but it changes how we can use it. It's a grammatical change. So here, atsukte is still just warm or hot, but it's grammatically speaking now different. We can do different things with it. And specifically, what we can do with it is add another adjective. Um, so with, once you have this form, this te form of this E adjective, now you're allowed to just add another adjective right here. Okay, we have this space, we can add another adjective. That we're allowed to do this now. Now, if we didn't change it into te form, okay, if we just left atsui, atsui, then the only thing you're allowed to put here is a noun or something that acts as a noun, okay? You're not allowed to put an adjective here. If we put an adjective, that would be grammatically incorrect. Is there like an opinion thing with them? I don't know. I've never heard that. Atsukute karai ramen. Yes. Um, usually you wouldn't... No, yeah, atsui. Yeah, that's good. Sorry, I was thinking way too far there. Atsukute karai ramen. Hot and um, spicy ramen. That's okay. Uh, yeah, conjugate like e adjectives. Tanoshiso. Kanji could be difficult to write down. Better not for shoshinsha. So, ne? Um, you can have atsui. So, here, if it's atsui and we put an adjective, okay, this is bad. Don't do this because it's just grammatically incorrect. This is where we need the te form. So, let's do it, right? Let's put an. Um, let's put kute. And now, any other. Adjective. So, like, um, what was the other one that, um, I think it was Atha? Yeah, atsukute samui. That's kind of funny, right? Atsukute, um, samui. Samui, literally, this means, like, it's, it's hot and cold. And the cool thing about the second E adjective is it can be used just as is, okay? Like, we don't have to change anything about the second one, or... Let me say it differently. We don't have to change anything about the last one. And we can string multiple ones together, okay? So we can have um, we can have many adjectives. So we can have... Actually, we could have atsukute, samui. Okay, but we can keep going. Like, we're not done. So let's get rid of this i. And let's change this into kute as well. And then what do we add? Well, anything we want, right? Kute. And we change... We add another thing. So yeah. Samukte nemui. That's good. Yeah, Beth. That's very nice. So this ka. So attemasu. So we'll just use what Beth said. Nemui. Nemui means sleepy. Right, kanji well. So this ne. You're Chinese after all. The OG. Um. So nemui. Nemui means sleepy. Ne. Mui. Now again, if this makes sense or not, is sort of besides the point. It's grammatically correct. That's what I'm kind of going for here. So you have atsukte, hot, warm, um, samukte, cold, and nemui, and sleepy. And again, I don't know if there's an object which is both hot, cold, and sleepy all at the same time. That doesn't matter. It's about the grammatical construction. So this is grammatically correct. You can and you can keep doing this. There is no limit for how many e adjectives you link together to have all those readings of the kanji in your head. <laughs> yeah. That's probably that's probably true. You figure it out after a while with um the stuff. Uh is that play? Am I reading that? Is that play? Thank you for the follow. Foro arigatou gozaimasu. All the time. <laughs> yeah, see there we have we have someone verb. And now to actually blow your mind, this whole thing, okay, this whole thing can now be treated like just one E adjective, as if it was just one big E adjective, which means that all the same rules apply, which means that I can now write, I can now write something like, um, I guess, burp here, right? Because he just said, you know, honestly, it's kind of concerning, because he just said, like, I'm hot, cold, and sleepy all the time, so... Atsukute, samukute, nemui, bab. Like, we could, we could, like, katakanaize this to make it sound a little bit more consistent. It would be something like, I guess, bab, right? Bab, if you're okay with this. If you agree with my katakanaization. Bab. This is a noun, right? It's a name. 
careful, you might have a cold. Ooh. Um, so this is perfectly fine. So now we have this long thing with three separate adjectives, but we get to treat it like it's just one. So we can just add like a noun after it. That's fine. That's good. And we can keep going. We can make this te form. We can add another one. There's no limit for how many adjectives you want to add. Um, of course, like, you gotta stop at some point because else your sentence is infinite and we can only have so much time. Um, yeah, bar seven. Uh, so, cool, right? Pretty cool. Um, very simple also. Um, so there you go. Atsukute, samukute, nemui. And then, to quickly finish this whole thing off. And again, remember, okay, the last adjective in the chain, which here is nemui, the last one doesn't get changed into te form. The last one stays because, again, the last one basically acts as the sort of the thing that turns all of it back into an e adjective, right? So that we can put a verb after, uh, sorry, so we could put like a noun afterwards if we wanted to, or like add this or something like that, right? So for that, it needs to stay in its normal e adjective form so that we're allowed to do that normally. It's decided with the last. Also, the time is decided with the last. Yes, usually it, that's true. So if you wanted to put this all into past, atsukute, samukute, nemukatta desu would be a way of saying like, ah, uh, it was hot and cold and I was sleepy, something like that, or and it was sleepy, like all of this. You can put the tense um, at the at the end. Usually that will then affect the whole thing. Katta, so ne, katta. Okay. Now, there is um, also uh, there there is also a negative version of this. Um, you could have something like. I feel like when people list negatives, they do it in different ways as well. But you could theoretically have like um, negatives, right? So uh, like tanoshi would be tanoshiku nai. Um, but I feel like it's not done as much. Like it would be the last one, like. Yeah, like tanoshikunak. I feel like tanoshikunakte is not really used. Um, people do say like tanoshikunaishi, atsukunaishi, but like tanoshikunak. No one really says tanoshikunakte. I don't think. I don't think it's used. Maybe I have to like. Um, I I might have to like look into that. But for now, the normal te form is definitely used a lot when linking stuff up. But when saying not this and not this and not this, I don't think people use like te form there, then you use like other things. Um, there is other ways of saying it, but we'll talk about those other things, I think in another episode, because it makes more sense also, because like she and stuff is used. Um, so there you go. So now let's look, let's focus on the positive ones for now. Um, so e adjective te form, it's basically it. Isn't she for listing reasons? Yeah, it, it, like reasonings or reasons or giving excuses, all of that stuff. It's basically that. Um, but if you're like listing a bunch of Things like, you know, oh, it wasn't fun and it wasn't, the weather was bad. It, often people use she there because they're like, yeah, this and that and this other thing. Staying positive, so, ne? その学者会かな学者会日本語の学者会の中ではこうい形容詞とな形容詞の表現がえっと使われてますね日本語ならいいの場合形容詞名の場合形容動詞うんそうですね日本へ行きましたかいや実はね今まで一度も行ったことないです
So let's look at no adjectives. Now, no adjectives are a little different. No adjectives. No adjectives are a little different. Time zoom or corpo caliber. <laughs> yeah. Um, no adjectives work a little differently because they don't have a te form. Because remember, no adjectives work more like nouns in a way. So we have to find another way of linking the nouns. But it's not that bad. MEC. That right? Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, you can say that. It's like it sounds like someone making excuses, right? It's like, oh man, I was I was so tired and it was warm and uh, my grades are bad. <laughs> yeah, adjectives, no adjectives. Um, let's make some examples of no adjectives. We had earlier um, kire, right? Um, kire. Kirei. Kirei. Beautiful. Kirei. Or um, Shizuka is another one that I use a lot. It's kind of a huge she. Shizuka. Shizuka. Quiet. Shizuka. So again, a na adjective is a na adjective because if we wanted to add a noun, Kirei na hito. Okay. I'll write hito in kanji. And if we wanted to say a quiet room, we would have to get, we have to say like, shizuka na hea. Um, and hea is like more, so this is easier if I write it like this. Wait, uh, this one should be white. It's a bit of a make, bijin, so ne, bijin. Utsukushi hito wa bijin. Um, hea. Shizuka na hea. So, this is, you know, this is the deciding factor here. Na adjectives require a na when they're placed in front of a noun. Now, only in front, okay? If you say, hea ga shizuka, you don't require the na. Actually, you require the copula for this to be a whole clause. Um, so, in a way, you still do. <laughs> shizuka, because um, we have talked about this a little bit, but na is, um, na is actually is actually the rentaike of da. So if you look this up, then actually it'll turn out it's it's rentai, right? So most people don't really care about this. It's rentaike. Konnichiwa. Ah, Junsuke-san, konnichiwa. Hey, no brainer. Hello. <laughs> Na uh, is actually, well, maybe I should make the arrow the other way around because rentaike, sono, ma da no rentaike. So basically, Na is actually the attributive form of da, the copula. Oh, don't worry about it. So, um, in a way, that copula thing as a predicate keeps showing up even within uh, this usage. So this na is actually a form of da. Um, it's an attributive form. It's the form that is used in front of nouns. Which makes sense because it's literally that, right? It's literally used in front of the noun. Um, so there you go. Um, by the way, all other verbs in modern Japanese happen to have the same attributive form as just their normal form already, their dictionary form. So for taberu, the rentaike would just be taberu. But like, theoretically, so theoretically, right, taberu. Uh, oops, I switched keyboards that I didn't want to. Theoretically, um, taberu here, this is just normal dictionary form or shushike or whatever you want to call it. But now, right, now I transformed it into attributive because I've added a noun afterwards. So now we would call it, grammatically speaking, this would be rentaike now, but it's the same, like it doesn't change. It used to. In classic Japanese, this would be different. If we have a noun after it, there should be different forms for this, um, but yeah, it just happens that for um, for da, right? This is different. We can say da, but we can't say like da hito. That doesn't work. But we we can say like na hito when there's something else here, right? Like a, you know, like an an, ad, an like an adjective, right? Na hito. So this this kind of works, right? So we can't say like shizuka shizuka da hito, but we can say shizuka na hito, taberu hito. So ne, um, tabeda yo. So, um, so here you have this this na, and now it turns out that 
the, the copula actually has other forms. It can turn into na for attributive, but it can also turn into de for conjunctive, <laughs> kind of, uh, conjunctive. So, cool for us, um, instead of using na, we'll just use de. And it turns out that that works just fine. So now we can say kire de shizuka. So beautiful and quiet. Kire de um kire de shizuka. And again, I'm giving you this whole da explanation just to maybe help you remember it or re give you an idea from where it comes from. You don't really need to remember this. Um, just remember that you need to use the de. This is just kind of a reason why it's there. It's really just a conjugated copula. It's like, it's the, it's literally the te form or the renyo ke, which would be the conjunctive form of the copula da. That's basically what it is. When you say taberu na means don't eat. Well, remember taberu na in there, that na can't be the na. So if we think about it grammatically, right? The na and taberu na, can't really be this na, okay? Because this na is um, this na is a, a a predicate. It's a verb, but taberu is just in its normal form, so it cannot be followed by a verb. So it has to be something else, which it is. It's like a specific particle, in that case, used to make things negative imperative. But it's not the same as this na. Just because they look the same, doesn't mean it's always the same. Um, for example, arguably, arguably this de is the conjunctive form of the copula, but in like Nihon de, that would be a different, that would be like the de particle, arguably, right? It becomes a little bit, it becomes a little bit vague, but yeah. Um, Kire de, eto, yuruyaka, chigao, kore, odaya, wait. <laughs> I forgot what this, how this is, atatakai, right? Atatakai, yuru, yuruyaka is different. Atatakai taiyo. So, that's actually correct. So, you know, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, this is basically it. You have kire de shizuka, and now you can kind of add the na again. Just like before, the last adjective stays kind of unchanged, and then we could add hito. So, kire de shizuka na hito, a beautiful and quiet person. How to add e adjective and na adjective? Yeah, so. Baguette, hey, konnichiwa. Genki desu ka? Hai, genki desu yo. Kirei de shizuka na hito. So to, um, now we need to sort of figure out how to combine them, but easily, uh, easily. Luckily, and people are already doing it in chat right now, actually. Luckily, this is exactly as simple as you might expect it to be. Um, it's literally just that. You mix them up. It's, it's just that. Like, you can mix them any which way, as long as the ones that are used in front of other adjectives are conjunctive as well. So we can literally go like, we can literally say like, uh, kire de, okay, kire de, and like, I don't know, oishi, whatever, <laughs> doesn't matter. Kire de oishi, beautiful and delicious. We can also say oishikute kire, that's fine as well. Um, we just flip it around, right? That's totally acceptable. You can say, um, oishikute, oishikute. I'll make this red here. Kute. And then just kire afterwards. And you can mix, mix and match. It, it doesn't really matter. Like, both of these are fine. Kire, oishikute, kire. And then here, you would have to have na and then a noun, right? Here you don't, here you can just have a noun. So, Luckily, that's it, right? You just, you can literally just mix and match them. Just make sure um, that you get the conjunctive forms for the ones that are in front of other adjectives. As long as you have that, you're good, okay? So for na adjectives, you use the de, and for e adjectives, you turn them into their te form, kute, and that's literally basically it. And then you can just mix and match uh, however you please. Yeah, and like again, I have asked people in the past. I've asked like Japanese speakers in the past if it would be better to have one first or the other, and I have tried to look this up. 
And from everything I could see is that there doesn't seem to be a rule. There doesn't seem to be a preferred way of having the E adjective first and then the N adjective or the other way around. Um, I'm sure that if you like gave the two sentences, kire de oishi and oishikute kire, maybe some people might have a preference there. Um, but yeah, I haven't really find, found one. I'm so sorry, it's like so noisy today, I don't know. It is so noisy. Is one of them used more often? Not really, like not that I can tell. And I've never found like an article about saying that you should use one over the other and I've never had anyone tell me and like, yeah, from everything I can tell, these are both equally valid and equally used. Kurokute shiroi terebi. Does that work? Yeah, that works. Kurokute shiroi terebi. Um, a black and white television. But there is a word for a black and white, which I think is, um, is it, um, is it like kokuhaku? Ah, semi! Nikagetsu mo arigatou gozaimasu. Uh, uh, is it, is that like hakko? I forgot what, or what it's called. Um, kuro, or shirokuro. Shirokuro, right? Shirokuro? Yeah, shirokuro. There is a word for black and white, so you could say like Shirokuro no terebi. Shirokuro no terebi. Tada, sore dake de. Kokuhaku, perhaps not. Kokuhaku shimashou yo. There you go, shirokuro. So, if, if, so for example, if you said like, Kurokte shiroi terebi, I'm pretty sure most people would think you're talking about the color of the actual TV unit. So if you have like a, a TV that is actually decorated in black and white as a color choice, that would be that. It's using kunyomi, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, shirokuro. I, for a second there, I wasn't remembering it properly, but that's it. Monokuro. There is actually a word called monokuro, which is monochrome. Um, but I guess monochrome just means using only a single color. But yeah, there is. Monokuro. 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 Pretty cool. If you ever need that. Monochromatic. That just means... I mean, mono means one, chromatic means, like, color. So, there you go. <laughs> there. You. Go. And hey, you know what? This is kind of a short episode, but... I think I'm okay with that because we've had like um, a lot of episodes where I went over time and now it's only been about 40 minutes. So do you have any questions about this stuff? Again, this is very simple, but um, it needs to be introduced. And also it makes sense to talk about it now that we've talked about the form of adjectives. All right. Um, I think uh, Hotame, actually, you asked a question before. Funny question. What's the difference between ni and de? Well, it really depends because ni and de both have widely different usages. For example, um, ni is usually for... So, for example, if we talk about location marking, okay? Just one of many usages of both ni and de where they overlap. If we look at it simply in the context of location marking, then ni marks location of existence, usually combining the verb... Usually using verbs like iru, Aru or sometimes sumu because it's about where you exist, where you are. Um, de marks location of an action, where you do something. So you say something like gakko de or daigaku de benkyo suru to study at the university or at the school. If you describe the location of an action, generally you will use de. But the location, if you describe the location simply where something exists, you will describe it with ni. That's the difference. And then let me see what Junsuke wrote. Ni is to be heya ga kirei ni naru. The room become clean. Mm. Well, the thing is, right, with ju what Junsuke said, um, Junsuke san, sono, ma, Junsuke san no setsume desu kedo ne, kono, ma, heya o kirei ni, su, kirei ni naru te yu tsukai kata wa, ma, bunpo teki ni wa, ko, kirei te yu, eh, to, keio doshi ga, ni o tsukate, eh, to, fukushi ni, Fukushi? Wait, what was the adverb again? Adverb. It's Fukushi. Okay, never mind. I was right. It turns into an adverb. Um, so theoretically, like, um, kirei ni suru and kirei ni naru are used, use ni because adding ni to a na adjective makes it into an adverb. So grammatically speaking, whenever you have 
adverb plus verb, the adverb then describes the verb. So, kirei ni naru, kirei ni suru, or um, shizuka ni suru, shizuka ni naru. All of these are theoretically simply adverb plus verb, um, grammatically speaking. But again, ni is complicated because ni has so many different usages. So just like de, de has so many different usages as well, which seem almost disconnected. Um, so, to give you an example, de can also be used for... Um, giving you what object or tool you use to accomplish an action. For example, uh, like kanazuchi de um, kui wo utsu mitai na, right? You would um, hit a nail with a hammer. Um, and then ni is used in so many different things as well. Ni is used, again, to make na adjectives into um, adverbs. It is used to mark the actor in passive sentences. It is marked to give goal and uh, goal of a movement. It is marked to give, yeah, time. It is marked to, to, it is used to mark time. It has so many different usages. Think of ni as the indirect object part and call it a day. Yes, you can, usually, but that doesn't really work for the adverb usage, does it? Um, so you can, but also no. Yes and no. It has many usages. I've, we're definitely going to make an episode about ni at some point, by the way. Maybe all, not even all of its usages, but just some of the main ones. Something like that. Kirei de kirei na hea ni natta. Kirei de kirei na hea. You can... Sometimes people will say something twice to emphasize it. Sore wa honto ni kirei de kirei de. It was really... It was so pretty and pretty and pretty. Like, kind of like that. Sometimes that is said. Yeah. It's a stretch adverse, but I think I'm capable of the mental gymnastics. Yeah. It's a little bit of mental gymnastics is what we all have to deal with. Hai. Ma. Ne? Kyo wa. Ma. Kyo janakte kyo no lesson. Ma. Koko made ni shimashou ne. Um, I think before we get too much out of hand, I will call... Uh, the lesson over at this point. Again, this was just short, teaching you about um, linking adjectives using the te form of e adjectives and using de with na adjectives. And that's fine. I'm not even ready for adverbs. So yeah, and we're not going to talk about adverbs just yet. There is a bunch more um, verb stuff and other, other things that I want to get out of the way before we get into adverbs. But rest assured, adverbs aren't that difficult. Anyways, Thank you very much for watching this part. The stream will continue. We'll do other stuff. Actually, I plan to do guided reading on the Discord server in just a bit. Uh, maybe in like half an hour or something like that. So if you're up for that, stick around. But for the recorded lesson, this is as far as we go. Hai. Eto, kono lesson wa koko made ni suru no de, eto, mite kurete hontoni arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you very much for watching this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.